Hey everyone, it's Suzanne, and I want to thank you for joining us for Your Creative Focus, where we help you build a business out of the hobby you love. You will also be able to get the show notes and the links we reference by visiting us at yourcreativefocus.com. Welcome back to week two of our planner series. During the entire month of June, we are going to be bringing you information on different planners, styles, and the people who use them. Last week, we talked with Helen Colebrook from Journal with Purpose on bullet journals. Plus, we had Ashley Shelley on our Made It Happen Monday show talking about her planners, which are perfect for decorating. One of the biggest head scratches I have had during this month's series is the notion of decorating your planner. As someone who needs a daily format to keep track of everything going on in my life, the concept of having space to stamp, put stickers, use washi tape over tired days is mind-boggling. Plus, how do you have time to do all that? I know it takes me an hour or more just to work on what is happening for the week ahead, and I am just writing and transferring. I can't even imagine how long it must take to beautify a week or a month for that matter. Not to say that there aren't some drop-dead gorgeous planner spreads out there, but after jazzing them up, how can you even think of defiling the prettiness with your handwriting? Why would you spend so much time working on a planner that you're afraid to mess up? When I started to research the planner decorating craze, the feedback I received was primarily, it was done for sanity's sake. Yes, it took a long time to stamp, decorate, and color, but it was more therapeutic than everyday functional, even though there are those who do use them for their everyday agendas. But being able to set aside some time on the weekends after the kids went to bed to play, plan, and decorate was a time for reflection and relaxation. It meant they were forced to sit down, take some time to be creative, and have major me time. If you think about it, it's quite brilliant. A lot of times we feel guilty sneaking off to our craft rooms to create, but by incorporating a hobby into a need, you have just thwarted the guilt monster inside of you. And I will admit that since I started this series, I have tried to use each and every planner method we discuss on the show. I have definitely fallen victim to several of these formats, including planner bling and washi tape. It's downright ridiculous what I have become addicted to. However, I will say this. So far, my favorite piece of planner decorating has come in the form of the adorable paper clips from Paperclip Planet. They are heavy enough to keep my pages lying flat as I progress through my dailies, and it's nice to have a pop of personality on my otherwise busy day. And I have even used stamps in my planner to spruce up some of the pages. Being a former stamp company owner, I thought it only fitting to bring in another stamp company to shed some light on the planner stamp craze. On today's show, we have Audra Bolster from Kindred Stamps, who designs some incredibly unique planner stamps that are great for combining your love for stamping with your daily routine. Audra, thank you so much for being a part of our planner series this month. Thanks so much for having me. Now, what do you think makes stamping and planners so popular right now? I think part of the biggest thing that makes it so popular is how um, there's so many options. You can add a bit of uniqueness to your planner. For me, I, uh, I'm not a great drawer, but I find that I can add cute little bits of whimsy to my planners with stamps by coloring them in and kind of filling in the spaces with things that I wouldn't normally be able to do. What made you decide to create and design planner stamps? Because your stamps range from just, you know, regular sentiments with some coloring, and then you brought out your planner stamps. Was it last year? Yes, last summer. And what made you decide to do those? So my very first planner stamp set, I created around a theme park theme. I knew there were a lot of folks out there that were interested in it, um, but weren't really able to find one that suited their needs, especially with how much planning goes into theme park vacations, you know, dining reservations, you know, fast pass ride reservations. Some people plan months and months and months ahead, um, and there wasn't really anything out there for that. And when I was planning a trip, that was when I first noticed that there wasn't anything kind of focusing on that. And so that was my first 
kind of tiptoeing into even planner stamps at all. And that was because of Rachel Wynn, wasn't it? Yes. She was crazy with her uh, Disney theme park trips that she takes. I know she was so excited that you were bringing them out last year. Yes. That was hysterical. She was she was kind of um, my biggest inspiration. And also, you know, she would give me help me. I would bounce ideas off of her, you know, different kind of image stamps, different sentiment stamp ideas. She's kind of been my my number one cheerleader in helping me get these out. Wow. So she's like a muse. Oh, very much. <laughs> <laughs> now you carry industry specific planner stamps like small business and direct sales stats. What motivated you to focus on those styles? Because I haven't seen too many planner sets, especially with the direct sales. What brought that along? I've personally been involved in direct sales and I've noticed that part of the the big thing, you know, having online parties, in-home parties, there's so much planning that goes on with that that I didn't really realize it until I started using planner stamps. And then, you know, when I went to go look for something, there wasn't really anything, especially for direct sales. And it's just, it's, it's a little crazy how there is so much involved if you want to be successful in a direct sales business. Planning everything out, it's very easy to get overwhelmed, have, you know, juggling too much on your plate. And so once I kind of saw that there wasn't anything there, I sort of started putting together what would I need to be successful in my direct sales business and kind of just went from there. And you have all kinds of stuff with your direct sales stamps. You have like the team and the ads, the giveaways, inventory, your social media, email. I mean, there's all kinds of really good, you know, order supplies, nice little reminders on there too. Yeah, because there's so much involved that I think there's a, you know, the umbrella of direct sales where there's so much in common, but there's also so much different, you know, some you need to order inventory for some, you know, you don't, some it's all online parties, some it's all in-person parties. And so it is kind of, it's, it's so involved that you don't realize that, you know, you need to, you know, make goals for yourself and make sure you're following up and, you know, make sure if you have a team, you know, you're doing the right training and even things like keeping track of mileage is really important because, you know, when tax time comes, you want to make sure, you know, everything, you know, is accounted for. And especially with social media nowadays, that was one thing that I knew I needed to put in there because with social media, that's just helped direct sales businesses just explode. And there's so many different options on how to succeed in direct sales that I knew that I needed to have a social media aspect to that as well. And I have to look, because I'm actually on your website right now, taking a look at all of them. And I know we have... Um, my mom, <laughs> Denise, she does bunky bags, which are, you know, fabric bags for like your Misty and then carrying around your, your craft supplies. You even have one for care instructions for people who hand make items. Yes. And that's another one that came kind of just kind of came up as there wasn't anything kind of like that. I was in um, a group on Facebook for Etsy sellers and people were looking for people to to make care instruction stamps, which I did already offer in my shop um, where you could kind of customize them. But then people wanted to say, okay, well now what if I added on, you know, sizes and um, prices? And I was like, well, that's like, you know, if I were to, I can surely I can custom make this for you, but it's going to start adding up. And then I thought, I wonder, you know, why don't I just make a set where people can make you know, put the words together, make their own care instruction set, and then also have things like the sizing or numbers so that they can add pricing. And then, you know, there's certain requirements for safety information. So then I put, you know, the different materials on there so that, you know, if it's made with wool or cotton or, you know, things like that. And that was something that I just had never seen. And it was made to kind of help other people that, were interested in things like that and I I was kind of surprised at how how that one's become very popular just because there isn't anything quite like that and it's also affordable rather than buying you know custom tags and having you know having them made they can focus on other things to spend money on their business rather than having all these other things made for them. You do recommend, I'm looking at your description which is fabulous because I know my mom has asked me and I'm like I don't know 
but like you recommend the VersaCraft. You said once it heat sets, it's permanent on the fabric? Yes. So that's great because it you can't tell that there's ink on the fabric. It's not going to um, affect the way the fabric feels. So if there's, um, you know, if it's on a kid's garment, it's not going to, you know, be itchy or scratchy like a tag. Mm-hmm. And it will be permanent once you, you know, use appropriate heat setting for the fabric. Mm-hmm. Um, and that one I've tested. There, there's a couple of other ones that you could use, but that one I've found that even once you've washed and even dried it, it it stays perfectly. Nice. And then the other piece that you have is just your regular small business planner stamps. And I have to say, there's like two of these stamps that I really, really enjoy. And that is post on social media and then also shop stats. Yes. Which is really kind of cool, you know, because you have on here views and then favorites, orders, and revenue. The favorites, that's very, very interesting. And is that kind of like, you know, people who go through and, you know, put the little hearts and stuff? Is that what that favorites is meant for, for your shop? Yes. So that's more for people um, on Etsy. And that's a stamp that I use pretty much every day. Um, I try to go the next morning when I'm reviewing everything I need to do. I usually fill in my stats for the previous day. Just so that, you know, I have it all in one, you know, spot rather than running reports, which I could do as well. But Mm -hmm. so it's kind of neat to see it all in one spot. You know, how many orders did you get? Favorites, how many people liked an item on Etsy? How many views did the shop get overall? And I found that to be, it's kind of just a neat little quick tracker that I think it's really neat to see day by day. And it's also kind of neat to almost challenge yourself you know, like, well, well, yesterday I had this many, like, what can I do to make today, you know, have that or more? And they all fit in like a traditional planner size. I mean, most of these are just words. Then you have like your little boxes, like for orders, the in and out. And then obviously the shop stats, do those fit in a regular traditional planner? So they should fit. I've sized them so it'll fit in, you know, like the Erin Condren or Happy Planners. Okay. Um, so it fits in those standard planner size boxes. And now we talked about the ink for fabric, but is there a special ink that you found works best for planner stamping? So that is kind of, it's an interesting question because there are so many different options out there. Um, I kind of had to play around and in a way, I'm sure you've discovered finding, you know, your planner is kind of a journey. Mm -hmm. I've definitely played around with a few different ones to kind of see the layout types I liked Um, And then it's just different how every different style also has different kinds of paper. Um, So some might be thinner, some might be thicker. I would say if you're looking for the most universal ink would probably be VersaFine. Because even on like the thinner pages, it's not going to bleed as much. Okay. I've also used some of the um, Memento Dewdrops, like the cute little colors and I found that pigments don't seem to bleed as much but for most of my like every day my go-to is going to be the VersaFine just because I found that it it doesn't bleed through the page quite as much and I use an Erin Condren planner so with that one um, that's just what's worked the best for me. What made you decide to go with the Erin Condren planner because that was going to be my next question was what planner that you use? So it's kind of, it's definitely been a journey. I kind of joined a ton of planner groups on Facebook and kind of looked around to see what everybody was using. And I think I've gone through maybe five or six different ones. I started with, um, I think a Filofax, which I liked. I thought they were really pretty and I liked that they had the refillable pages. And then I moved, I tried bullet journaling, which I I liked, but I just felt like that took more time than I had. And then I moved. So probably now I use kind of a combination of two. So I use the Erin Condren as like my normal everyday go-to. And then I also use printables um, that I purchase from, I believe it's So Much Crafting on Etsy. And um, they mail the printouts to you. And I really like it because the paper is a little bit thicker. So if I want to color some things, I kind of like using those. I have kind of like a, that's more of my fun non-business planner. And so, yeah, it's definitely been kind of a journey to find what works best. That's also kind of fun too, because then you get to kind of try different ones out. And it's neat also um, just being in all the different groups I was in to kind of see what everybody else uses because there's so many different ways you can use planners that I, 
I learned so much I wouldn't even have thought of, you know, some people are just so creative and how they um, use their planner. It's amazing. I get sucked into Instagram. This is like the first thing I do in the morning because I'm procrastinating getting out of bed is I go through Instagram <laughs> and I found some great friends on Instagram. I was yeah. like Kimona Tracy. I found on Instagram just randomly doing the little search. And it is when those, those some of those planner spreads, I'm just like, whoa, they're color coded and they're pretty. It's like there's a lady, um, her name's Sparkle. And I can't remember her Instagram account. I will find it and I will put it in the show notes. But her her spreads are gorgeous. They're colored and they're vibrant and they're so bright and cheery and happy. And she has stamps and stickers. And I'm like, there's no way I could even use that. I know. It's it's definitely like there is some hardcore planner envy sometimes where you're just like, oh man, like and it's very inspirational to see, but then sometimes it's like, oh man, I wish mine, you know could look like that but it's it's so fascinating to just see like how different and how many different options there are mm-hmm. and so many different ways and and now it's just great how many different you know products like the washi and the paper clips and the stickers and the stamp it's great it's 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 really incredible i was one of these people who never used washi tape i mean i owned like a thing of washi tape that i never used And I started doing, I was using the bullet journal after I owned my business. When I had my business, I mean, as you know, with a stamp company, we have so much stuff going on. I mean, there's releases and designs and getting them manufactured and getting them plated and all the social media and doing the orders and when to order, you know, supplies. And my planner was, I had a printable one too, as a custom one from Jessica Marie. And I had her do one up specifically for my daily routine that really saved my butt. And then when I okay. sold the business, it was like, oh, now I have like some time. I get yeah. to have a pretty planner. I don't get, yeah. you know, I don't have to be stuck with one that's like business and yeah. my day is full. And so I started doing the bullet journaling and good Lord, I went washy crazy. It <laughs> has been ridiculous. Ridiculous, And I don't live in an area where I can go shopping. Like I have to drive. I I go to Arizona once a month. So I drive seven hours. And so when I go down, I get like all of my shopping done. And I really (laughs) hope my husband isn't listening. But I spent almost $300 on washi tape. $300 on washi tape. (laughs) It is ridiculous. I know. It's crazy how much it all adds up, but it's so much fun. (laughs) Oh, it really is. And now I I spent Saturday, I believe it was Saturday, me and my girlfriends, um, and I'm totally bringing them out, Justine and Jennifer and Josephine and Kaimona, although Kaimona was off doing fun stuff. But we were shopping. We were enabling each other on Facebook and we bought Traveler's Notebook and we're looking at bling and the paper clips and the bands and oh, it was ridiculous. It was epic foolishness on our our part, but it was so much fun. And we're all like, how did this even happen? How did this start? And I'm blaming it on Justine, but it's my fault that I do realize that I'm going to own it, but, (laughs) but it has been so much fun and there's a lot of creativity to it. You know, being able to take the cute little stamps, because it's like, you know, as stampers, we enjoy using our stamps and they do add that personality, like you said, you know, and you can have, you know, some of the uniqueness that is special to you, you know, like with your vacation stamp set that you have. I mean, that's something that's exciting and that brings you even more joy you know, to kind of play around. It's like you have this, the unicorn planner stamp set, which has like little diamonds and little jewels and little unicorns everywhere. I mean, that's something that you can add personality to, you know, right. this is, this is now you as a reflection of yourself, you mm-hmm. know, which is wonderful. Out of all of your planner sets that you do have, what is your favorite that you like? So I would say that out of all of my stamps, the ones that I use the most um, are definitely the small business planner stamp set. But the ones that I have the most fun with are the unicorns. I love, I unicorns are so so cool right now, but they're just so cute. And I do love those little boxes with the donuts and the gemstones. And I'm really into like the pastel kawaii colors. So I love getting to color with those in my planner. And so it just adds like brightness and funness to, you know, Especially, you know, when a lot of my planner is just business related, it's kind of nice to add a little pop of fun. 
Um, and so that's why I like using that set the most. Now, if someone wanted to get into planner decorating, what would be your recommendation of products to pick up and, and planner type to use? Who? Um, I would say definitely look around at the options. I wouldn't go just straight for, you know, whatever you see first. Definitely kind of play around. If you can go into a craft store that sells planners, uh, maybe look around to see, you know, see it in your hand. See, because some of them can be pretty bulky. Compare them in person. And then once you kind of see what style you want, then it's kind of nice looking at all the different options, and especially inside craft stores. You know, they do have kind of packs of stickers and washi and all that fun stuff. And then maybe look if you're looking for um, stamps, kind of look around to see, you know, what you're going to be planning out the most. I know there's some really great stamp options. There's, you know, different coloring options. Some people use colored pencils. Some people use markers. I know there's people that even just use crayons and it's totally cute and adorable. Sometimes when you look at planners, you can get really overwhelmed at how much there is. And, you know, you quickly like, you know, you just want to buy everything for it. <laughs> it's like, you just get sucked in. You're just like, Oh goodness. So the other thing I would recommend is finding some sort of like tote or bag that you can store things in. It sounds crazy. I know the first time I got one, people were like, wait, you have a bag just for the stuff that you plan with. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but it's like, well, you know, I, ne I never know when I might want to plan. And it's nice if I'm just sitting around at home watching TV at night and I don't want to, you know, just sit there. I can you know, pick up my little tote and start working on planning stuff. So there's so many things that you don't think of, um, you know, right off the bat. But definitely, you know, finding the planner you like, I would say if you want just one universal ink pad, look at VersaFine. They even come in colors if you don't want to do just black. Find a nice pen. Um, I like Inkjoy pens. I, I think I have probably every color they make. Um, it's really smooth to write with. They don't, you know, smear, which is really nice. They don't bleed through the paper. And then just have fun. I mean, you can look, follow people on Instagram, look on the Facebook groups that have tons and tons of inspiration there. And um, I found some really great supply um, planners I had never heard of through these groups, different washi tape companies I'd never heard of, planner clip companies. So there's a lot out there and it's really exciting. And, and it's, I just find it so much fun. Yeah, no, it truly is. It has been a blast. And if you like the Kawaii ones, you totally have to check out Annie's Paperclip Planet. She has adorable Kawaii themed paperclips. Like I have a Kawaii uh, coconut cup oh. that has the straw with the little umbrella coming yeah. out of it. And then um, she has like the little sunshines and the little macaroons. And she has Oh my gosh, there are so many that she has. They and she has the stickers and the pen clips. I oh, haven't tried the pen yeah. clip on my Ink Joy yet, but they are and it's just pineapples. I mean, there's just so many. They're little koala bears. What are pen clips? You actually put them onto your pen and they just have the cute little kawaii face on them. So you can have oh. like I have the the pen clips for the koala. Oh, they have a cute little koala too. They have um, the pen clips for the the little coconut cups, and they just make your pen happy. Oh my gosh, I need these. Yeah, and they have like stickers that match every, so it's like all coordinated. She has little kawaii watermelons. Oh my oh, word! Yeah, I'm gonna have to look this up. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's addicting. It is so addicting. She's fabulous, and she's putting out new ones all the time. So you totally have to check her out. And she has like coloring pages. Like she has this one for like the no spend June. Yeah, oh, it ain't yeah. happening. Yeah, no. I always aspire to do that. Like I, I would love to, but. <laughs> yeah, it's just not happening. <laughs> but the pages are super cute and they're all in this kawaii theme. So yeah, if you like the kawaii, you totally have to go out there, check them out. I don't think she has any unicorns, but I would tell her like, hey, give me some unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> But they are adorable. Now, where can people go to learn more about you and Kindred Stamps? So our website um, is just www.kindredstamps.com. We're also on Instagram, uh, instagram.com slash kindredstamps. Uh, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash kindredstamps. And then we also have fan group on Facebook. So if you go to um, facebook.com and search kindredstamps fan club, you can also find us there. And that's kind of where... 
if people want to post some of the things they've done or if they have questions, it's a great little group there. And Audra, thank you so much for being a part of our June planner series. And we will have links to Kindred Stamps, pictures of her planner stamps, along with photos of some of incredible planner spreads in our show notes at yourcreativefocus.com. And please join us every Thursday this month to find out more about planners, the styles, and how they work for you. Next week, we have Jessica Marie Design on the show to talk about customized planners and the benefits they provide to you and your planning needs. I also want to say thank you to our amazing sponsors for the planner series, Quo Vadis and Paperclip Planet. Don't forget to leave a comment on one of our planner series posts and be eligible to win one of the amazing prizes our sponsors have donated to the series. We have three Rhodia bullet journals, three Quo Vadis Scholar Planners for the 2017 and 2018 calendar year, and three $15 gift certificates to Paperclip Planet. Until next week, this is Suzanne, and you have been listening to Your Creative Focus. Happy planning! <music>